dream stitches i wake up seeing stitches it's stitches my life is like stitches stitches hello this is episode number six of better fitting knits uh, my name is lena and i'm pearls knitting today we're going to talk a little bit about kibi to touch up on the last week's um podcast episode i don't know what to call these things I, it's just me chatting with you guys and it seems like chatting at this point because i i read a lot of comments i try to answer them immediately although i do have a full 10 hour working days but um, i just still prefer to answer when i can immediately um so we'll talk a little bit about about Kibi, just a touch, because in the last few uh, in the last week, uh, I watched a few of the podcasts, and a few of the people mentioned about the intuitive fit and how they like clothes to fit their bodies. They they talked a little bit about that, and I thought it was very interesting. Then I will address the uh, most important thing, how to correct the neckline of the most sweaters, and I'll give an example on mine. Um, but the questions were asked and it made me think about it and made me think that I will not be able to uh, correct every individual neckline, but I will give you a formula that you will be able to use and then I will concentrate mostly on releasing my tutorials and my patterns. So you will be able to either watch tutorial, you don't have to buy a pattern, but you will be able to watch tutorial and see how I do it and just figure it out for yourself how to do it in your, uh, how to fix your sweaters, how to design your sweaters if you're a designer. And also I wanted to, to tell you uh, that if you, if you will get a pattern, you will have a write-up, uh, try to draw schematics. I will be drawing more. Uh, the more I learn about Procreate, the more I will be drawing. And then there will be at the very end a little episode about my stitch markers, as promised. So let's dive into it. Um, I was watching a few of the podcasts and um, Andrea Maury was uh, talking about, was answering some questions. And the person asked her, how does she shape the body of her sweaters? Uh, which, what am I wearing? Never released pattern. This pattern is about 12 years old. I don't know. I just wanted something like that to create. This is a very, this is longer kind. So it's shaped here. Um, this is an odd to shaping sweaters in the, uh, here at your body. And as she was answering the question, she said, uh, you can do it this way, that way, blah, blah, blah. But she said, I tried. And for my body, because I'm more straight, those uh, shaped ones, they just don't look as good. So intuitively, she knows uh, based on what I see, she's a gamine, like just plain gamine. She's not a flamboyant gamine. She's not soft. She's just plain gamine. She looks like a little fairy, um, a little tomboyish but but a little girlish so she's that that kind uh, always smiley always approachable so she's that gaminish kind of girl um, and she knows she already knows that like I know that I'm straight here I like cropped and that's most of her designs beautiful cropped mostly sometimes oversized that will fit everybody depends on how you wear it. Will it be more flattering for some body types? No, but if you want to wear that, if you, if it makes you, if it makes you feel comfortable and beautiful, knit it, wear it, wear it. Um, so that's that. And then a few other podcasters just noticed the same thing. Well, I don't think that this fits me more. And I, one of them tried to make the fable wear I test knit for for her a few times. They're beautiful. You want to you want to make them. You think, "Oh my gosh, I will look beautiful in them." And then you put them on and it, it, you just feel off. You don't feel like you well put together. Something is just not right. So, uh, I just, I just gave them away. Um it was fun making them, but I gave them away because it's just not not my style. Uh, something that I liked that I thought I would wear, but I just I just never wore it. So follow your lines, 
basically what Kibi says is you have to accentuate your your lines your body uh, be proud of who you are and where if you go along with those lines lines meaning you have longer sharper bones meaning you will be uh, your body will be accentuated or elevated by long line one color not broken up um, my Thai flamboyant gamine benefits from broken up lines the busier it is the better like this is very simple if i spice it up like have you watched emily in paris she's a flamboyant gamine so lily collins is a perfect example in there she dresses i mean i just think how the heck does she do it she she looks great she looks really really great with all of the colors all of the stuff that she wears uh, it's amazing so, and then the softer kinds will benefit from softer lines, rounder lines, not as sharp, not as geometric. Um, me, one of my traits for my body type would be more structure. And I guess this is the structure for the sweaters. This is why I like it so much. And I like the perfect precise fit. So I think it goes along with your body type, your, how you dress, how you, so I would have added more structure. I would have added right now, like a, maybe a, a tiny little shoulder pads, just to bring it up a little bit, just to crisp it up slightly, slightly. So that's what I'm saying. It's not uh, that you can't wear everything. You wear what you like and what you want and what makes you feel better. But sometimes some things, and you know what those things are. You you know that you would prefer for comfort a little straighter body. You would prefer a little round or something or softer lines. So you already know. That's what I wanted to touch on. And, and Miriam Style, she doesn't produce a lot of videos, but Miriam Style, I'll link her below. She just came out with her latest video. She does it so well. So she drew all five her types because she uh, she she has her type, her own types. Um, only five, easier to understand. And she draws them for you. And she drew an outfit, a girly outfit, a girly outfit, on five body types, how it will look, and that sometimes just looks a little off. And then she suggests what to correct to make it look just like you, you know? So that's that. Now let's move on to the other stuff. There were a few questions of, um, I have, I'm working on this sweater, but I'm thinking of unraveling it because the neckline is like way too high for me. There are a lot of issues uh, structure wise and fit wise with sweaters uh, that the designers design. If it's knit in a round sweater, it has more, it's more prone to errors and more prone to bad fit. So let me address this. <clears throat> this is not even, there are no short rows here. So when you fold the sweater, if the front neckline is identical to back neckline, which this one is, it's just stretched out a bit. This is why it's like slightly off, but there's no difference. If you are on Ravelry and you uh, like a design and you look at the pictures of uh, maybe somebody made it, maybe designer has it laying out flat, like flat. So you can see what's the difference between if there's one inch difference, no difference, that will be up in your throat right here. It'll choke you and the back and neck line will be way too low. So based on the pictures, you can already tell what's not the right fit for you or what will be bothering you. If the neck neckline is wide, then maybe it will lay slightly lower and it will lower down a bit, but not much. So this is a, oh, a commercial sweater. This is what a normal, I mean, yes, it's seamed, yes. But this is what a normal sweater should look like. Two and a half inches minimum, three inches, a uh, good, good difference between the back and uh, the end of the back neckline or beginning and the beginning of the front neckline. So this is optimal. This is what will not choke you. And if I put this sweater on, it actually sits like, it's a crew neck. It sits really close to my throat. So, how do you make this happen in this, you ask? 
Um, this is one of my designs. This is on Etsy. I'm actually selling it. It's Never Published Pepper Pattern. Should be the name of my channel. Never Published Pattern. So this is... That's what I designed. It's a raglan. Um, with balloonish like sleeves. But what you see is this is knitting around all in one piece. But do you see that neckline? It's shaped perfectly. How do I do that? Stay tuned. No, um, I'm going to give you the little formula right now to fix it. But uh, I will be slowly releasing my yoke sweaters, my raglan sweaters. They all shape the same. It's the same thing. Yoke, um, raglan saddle shoulder anything is the same it's the same thing you just it's just different stitch distribution stitch increase or decrease based if you work top down bottom up it's the same thing so what do you do most sweaters the neckline divided in half right do you see that the neckline is divided in half do you understand what i mean this length of this back neckline curve is way less than the curve of the front neckline. Same as here. This is knitting around seamlessly, seamlessly. So a little shorter at the back, longer at the front, right? You can tell, right? So what do you need to do? If we are uh, designers started adding short rows. Can you add short rows? Yes. Can you add a little more short rows? A little more. Yes. Not much. What happens if you add too many short rows to the cone shape, right? What happens is that cone shape, you will just, if you work in half moons, the normal, standard, regular stuff. If you work in half moons and you build it up, it will create the hunch at the back. It will fold the fabric will fold and literally would just fold here at the neckline yes it will be higher and yes you can add more uh, short rows and keep building it but it's a cone shape and it's divided in half so what it means is that cone shape it's still gonna be cone shape so when you put it on it will sit higher because you never build anything for the shoulders you didn't allow this to lay over your shoulders and hug them it will stretch over it will just pull up more it will create more problem at the neckline and it will create a gape at the back so what do you do it's not as easy but if you feel comfortable you can do it if you want the easiest thing add a few more short rows uh two three tops after that it will become problem where it will ride up and create extra bulk here and you will still not fix this this stuff no so if you divide stitches for the neckline in half and you will keep following the short rows that the pattern tells you to what you need to do is offset it so you need this to be a back neckline so think that uh, for a fingering weight or um, sport weight maybe subtract eight stitches from each side of the neckline when you divide it in half okay mark that spot here and here this will be your fold this will be where that neckline will go down keep working short rows um, one rule to know here is if you work short rows one stitch away from the next stitch one stitch it will create more uh, straight line, steep line. Two stitches will start to curve up a little more. Three stitches will be like flatting it up. So um, in here, one stitch away will be great, then transition to two and then maybe three, but always this. Sometimes designers don't um, have too, um, too many stitches here and then you will you will see it's like gaping like that like it's it's misshaped here or two little stitches um little stitches two little stitches in the flat part of the middle that is not a problem um way too many that creates the weird shape of the neckline it's just not good so 
just add more uh, short rows. Just keep on working in those half moons. But when you work in those half moons, so let's say your short row starts here, you're going across the back to the other side where you will turn, right? Meanwhile, while you do that, you have the stitch markers right here where you where you place them. What we need to do right now is those eight stitches. For example, eight stitches. It could be ten. Just see where you can place it where you think it will be comfortable for your neckline where you really want it sitting at your back. So those eight stitches, at this point you need to add them for the back. So when you add all of the stitches for the back, the stitches for the front and for the back will be equal, right? That's what we want. We want the front to have the same number of stitches as the back. And when we offset it, obviously we have 60 stitches less. Eight on this side, eight on this side. What do you do? So as I was editing the uh, uh, podcast, my video, um, I realized because I had to add my um, footage from the stitch marker release, um, I realized that I don't think I was clear enough on how to actually, what to do actually here. So let me review that quickly. Um, if you divide and uh, if you divide the number of stitches for the neckline in half, um, if the body of your sweater is knit straight and you can handle those extra stitches, um, you can add them or you can subtract them from the neckline. So there's two points. If you want to keep the same number of stitches going into the pattern and for the body, um, and the neckline is not too tight, like not too small, so you will be able to fit it through the head. Subtract, let's say on each side you want to take 10 stitches off to shift the back and the front. So imagine that you will be taking this much off of the back here and this much here. So it will offset it. That's what I mean by offset. So if the neckline is wide enough, not too tight, so you can fit it through your body, when you subtract, let's say 20 stitches, let's just like, if you have 100 stitches to cast on, 100 will be too small uh, of a circumference for fingering. But just for example, 100 stitches. You have 100 stitches, you divide it in half, 50 stitches for the front, 50 stitches for the back. Subtract 20 stitches from the back. So right now you will have 80 stitches on your needles. Work 80 stitch trim for the neckline. And then when you're ready to transition for the body, when you're working on those short rows, before you go into any of these designs, because if the short rows are in your pattern already, most likely it will be just, just straight knit. This is how I do it too. Sometimes I would like to implement more of a pattern and I will, but for now I like to keep it simple so you, I can get my groove into how to do it all in one go. So 80 stitches and you will place the stitch marker separating the back. At this point, 30 stitches from 50 stitches for the front, right? And while you work on the short rows, see how many short rows you have. If you have, let's say, um, six turns or four turns, four turns, eight rows, right? Because one turn takes two rows. So in those eight rows, you need to increase those 10 stitches. You can add another short row, another, like two more rows. It will be okay. Just space them out the same amount of stitches that just follow the pattern. The same amount of stitches. It's okay. And add two more. So every other row, you will add two stitches per each shoulder at the back where your stitch markers are. I hope that is clear because I, as I was uh, reviewing it, I didn't think I was clear. So in those 
10 rows or 5 turns every right side because it'll be easier if you can do it every row it's okay if you can if it's easier for you to do it on a right side row do a double increase at each shoulder and that will make it uh you, then you will even out the stitches you will have 50 stitches here 50 stitches here by the time you're done with short rows and you will transition into your pattern if you have a simpler pattern and you don't have any room to take out those 20 stitches um, what you can do is shift meaning you will still have 30 stitches here but you will have 70 stitches here it will be a lot more of increase for you um, maybe less stitches maybe not 10 for each side because to even it out you will have 70 and 70 that's not 100 stitches that are, that is 140 stitches so but yes it will be a good shape for the body but you will have to implement it into the body and think how many stitches do you have here from underarm to underarm so i hope that is easy to understand it i lived in it I lived in that nightmare. I live in this nightmare. Stitches, I dream stitches, I wake up seeing stitches. It's stitches. My life is like stitches, stitches. So think about it. Um, ask your questions if you still have it. Uh, but that's basically what it is. Um, and maybe again, not like 10 stitches, maybe five stitches that will still do the difference. That will still increase it at the shoulder slightly and will make that that uh, shoulder like increase. So it's not cone shape, but it will be like that for the shoulders. You know what I mean? Um, I hope that's clear. And I hope that's clear the difference of the stitches that you will add on. Either go to the next size up probably because that might be the difference if um, it's not going to be too much of a body at the body from underarm to underarm when you will increase it from the neckline and not subtracting it. Um, I hope that's easy to understand. It's probably not for some people. It's uh, uh, space science. Whew. Once you start diving into stitches and increases and, 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 and shaping, it's, it, it's all downhill. Whew. Um, all right, let's continue. Where you place the stitch markers as you work your short rows. When you come to that stitch marker, um, make increases towards the back, right? So it will create those lines at the back. I have a perfect example. There. You will have these little lines at the back right because you will be making you will be repeating this you will be making those little increases increase one stitch every other row or um, two stitches every other row there are techniques i will actually record a video soon on us braille's technique um she is the author behind the distich really great book but she has really really good um on her facebook her instagram and her youtube she has really cool techniques for double increases like really, really beautiful ones so what do you do right. where you have your stitch markers at the back this is the back right as you work your short rows across when you come to the stitch marker if you work from here to here, when you slip the stitch markers, you come to it, make an increase, keep working the short row, make an increase before stitch marker, slip stitch marker, keep on working to the next stitch, make a turn, go back. Um, do not add stitches on the wrong side. It's easier to keep it all on the right side. It's doable. Uh, and this is this will create the best fit, the best, the best fix ever. Um, when you will make those increases, it will allow for the shoulder. So at this point, it's not going to be a cone shape. And it will create that shoulder shape a little bit. It will shape it a little bit. 
and it will widen up at the point where you need it widened up so it sits perfectly on your body and not a cone shape that has uh, extra fabric build up at the back so that's basically what it is if you still didn't get it wait for my next pattern the next pattern after sassy i'm working hard this weekend taught me that something has to give and sometimes i need to spend time with my family and take care of my health and um the delay in pattern release obviously i had to release it my my deadline was tuesday today is wednesday i'm recording this after work this is very important uh, i just try to manage it all but i'm planning to release sassy sweater by the end of this week um still recording videos <laughs> still i had i lost some footage i had to re-record it be because i found uh, accidentally I found a better way of doing something and I just scrap it all and I started all over again and I fixed the part of the pattern where I, I just had to fix some of the stuff in the pattern so it'll be easier for you to understand and work and it will be a new technique so each sweater I will introduce a new technique and um, wait for the next one I call it the Milky Way uh, because it just looks like a Milky Way like a galaxy and it's a uh, very easy knit. Uh, you will need two because you hold, uh, it will be a mohair or surrey alpaca held with fingering weight yarn. And because of that, you will, um, you will have a thicker yarn. So it's not gonna be as tedious as I like to knit with fingering weight yarns and all that stuff. So, all right, so this is my little advice. And now we're gonna go to my recording studio and I will show you all my stitch markers not all not all not all um, a lot of them <clears throat> a lot of the stitch markers uh, the difference between them uh, what I like more what I like less why I like them uh, where I use them uh, most of it is there but it's hard to to just describe it all but I give you the little thing that these are the simple round ones. Uh, these are from Coconuts. This is from some other brands. Uh, a lot of them from Etsy. Some of them from some of my friends. Some of them from the yarn shops that I visit and um, frequently or not frequently. And sometimes I just like to buy a stitch marker too. Um, I use them all the time. I love them a lot. Um, they're on my needles all the time to mark something a uh, turn a uh, stitch a uh, increase um, when you will be working on my patterns for the yoke or reglan i use numbered stitch markers and i use supporting stitch markers to mark how many stitch mark uh, how many stitches i increased from the numbered stitch marker to where i started increasing um stuff like that so in it's coming in in slowly i'm trying to to just slowly introduce pattern by pattern and release those patterns that i never release and wear and love uh so now i just want them finally to come to life and i want i've learned new tricks and tips so i will include it into each pattern each pattern will have something new something old um so just just give me some time a little bit of time it's uh, hard to juggle manage a job that i love and this my passion so um slowly i'll i'll try i'll try i'll try um but well let's go to my recording studio and i'll show you my stitch markers a lot of them markers all kinds of stitch markers some that mean a lot some that we gifted some that we bought they're all different how can we divide them into groups so let's start with this coconuts there are different kinds these ones are my least favorite ones because they slip they're not um very good at keeping the place because they, they just slip slip of the stitches they're too thick 
for small needles, uh, not thick enough for bigger needles. So these ones are my least favorites. Um, I don't use them pretty much at all. Just because they slip, they don't really keep stuff on track. And then we have these three. Different size rings. What's great about them is they're all slightly little, just a little bit flexible. They're different sizes and different colors. I don't use these, unfortunately, because these are too big. I don't use big needles anymore. I'm mostly knitting with fingering weight yarn, maybe DK, sometimes worsted, but these are just too big. I don't like big needles. I don't like how they feel in my hands, but I still keep them just in case for some projects that I might need them in different colors. Regular rings. These work for almost any needle, even the tiny little ones, but they're thick for those needles. So the stitch marker has to be perfect. Um, not too thick, not too thin. These ones are great, again, for little um, needles, for smaller size needles. But if you compare them to, let's say, this one, this is a silver one with a tiny, tiny little bit um, of a bead right there but it's slightly thinner than this and kind of easier to handle on a needle. What am I talking about? Hmm. Let's see. So, the needle, right? It's easier to slip this one on and off the needle as you knit, right? See how easy? It's not too thick, it's not too thin, it doesn't take too much space between stitches. This one is a, a worsted weight a yarn, so it doesn't really matter, but for fingering, when it's or lace um, weight yarn, if you put way too thick of a stitch marker, it creates the extra space between stitches that you don't want. So there it is. These ones are silver still, but a little thicker. It's still pretty good to slide them on and off. Um, if you were to work with it. See, I like them slightly larger so I could easily get them off. This one is smaller than I would probably want to for this size of needles. And this is size uh, four millimeter. So there it is. This is still doable. These I do like because they're slippery, they're colorful, um, they're very easy to slip on and off the needle, very easy, even at this small size, you know, or I would work with these, but these you would have to be careful because if you have lace yarn and the stitches are closed together, it will create a little gap. Again, this is thicker yarn, so it's not as obvious. All right, so these are the simple round ones and I have them in different sizes, tiny, tiny little ones for tiny little needles, although it's like for zero, size zero needle, maybe good. Anything else? I don't know. That would be a no. All right, so these are all of those things. A simple circular stitch markers. All right, now, Coconuts has these. They're great at uh, being a project keeper, uh, just to keep your place. Um, what I don't like is that they eventually break. I kept this one just to show you, but it's normal life of a stitch of a stitch marker, and I use them a lot, so uh, they just get bent. Uh, what I found better than these for me, because as a progress keeper, these are great, just to hang them to identify that you're so many stitches away from the next decrease or increase. Maybe you want to uh, just mark something else in your knitting. These will be great and they're colorful. So with different colors, you can just keep on track with what you're doing. With my short wave technique, you can just say, okay, the green ones will mean that you are two stitches away from the next turn. The yellow ones will mean that you five stitches away from the next short row turn. So this is that. What I found better than these would be the removable stitch markers with the round clasp, like that, like that, versus the normal regular uh, progress keeper, which will have a lobster clasp, this, you know? I don't like them because usually, even with my nails, see what I mean? Like, it's hard to get it off for me. 
same goes with the with the stitch uh, when you try to get it into the stitch sometimes just stretches the stitches out because they're thick let's face it they're thick compared to these then thick easier to put on the stitch not as easy and heavy so you want to look out for how light and heavy they are for different things um let's review these too so these are the same as these they don't hold no matter what i tried i love them i really love them but they fall off my knitting so these i um i'm sad to say but i want to use them i like them a lot but i can't so these would be a no in my book uh these i found lately that these i love a lot first the round clasp it's pretty big it fits any needle that i work with it's pretty thin it's very easy uh, sometimes I have to change a pattern on a fly and I have to move the stitch markers uh, where I mark, mark the short rows. Maybe I would mark the decreases or increases, something like that. So these are great because I can just on a fly, take them off, put them on to the stitch, put them on the needle at any given place. So these I use either as beginning of the round, just normal uh, regular stitch marker or the removable ones. Um, it just gives more flexibility. So those are those. Um, some of them, no matter what you do, so they're not as smooth as people are saying. You can tell like right now my nail is kind of like, you know, so this snags onto the thinner weight yarn or thicker weight yarn, but um, maybe um, if it's four or five strands, it just gets caught into one of those and I don't like it, but it's thin enough. And one more thing to note, if you compare this to this, this has that extra ring, that extra join and it's more flexible and it's easier to move around the needle. It's easier on your knitting. So this one is not flexible and sometimes it gets in a way and just doesn't stay right. You know, like it, see what I mean? It doesn't have the flexibility that this extra ring will offer like that. It just lays on your knitting better. You know, this not movable, pretty, but just, and thin enough right but this uh, is just much better because of that little join it's more flexible around the needle so much more comfortable these ones are by ridiculously cute i have a, quite a few of uh, jen's stitch markers i started buying ridiculously cute stitch markers because they're pretty they're unique um like this is one of them like who wouldn't want to have this on their needles right when i feel like it i just put this on I have a little uh, like finger stitch marker when people annoy the heck out of me. I just put that on my needles and knit with it. Um, I have these. These are heavier and not like, see how it's made? That is a snagging disaster. So, and heavy, pretty heavy, but cute, cute cat. And because it has that extra, you know, it's not, um, it's not rigid. It's, it's pretty flexible. So it's better on your on your knitting versus something that doesn't move. So these, this one, great. Um, Jen also makes these. Yes, these are elaborate. These are a lot of stitch marker, right? But it's just so cute. So when I'm in the mood for something like that, I just go for this, you know? Extra little music to my ears. Those little things. All right. Um, these are from my local yarn shop. Katie makes them. These are great. Um, they're pretty smooth. I will, I will be honest. They sometimes do snag, but they, uh, this is not hers. This is what she sells, but these are hers, like this one. So it's made with her uh, grandmother and great-grandmother's uh, beads, necklaces. But see, she has this extra movement here. That's how she makes them. And they're pretty smooth. Um, and I like the story behind them. And I just sometimes when I'm like very nostalgic and I just want to have these on my needles, I'll just put those on my needles. And she has the lobster claw ones, the progress keepers. 
something like that. These are not hers. This is what she sells. Uh, it comes in a set, but because they just they just fit together, I just have them on one ring. There's that. This one uh, is from my friend. <laughs> we connected through Etsy, and this is what I like that it still has that movement. It's pretty light. I have to tell you that. So she makes these. Look at these. These are beautiful mushrooms. So they're pretty light compared to this. This is way heavier than this. So I would prefer this as large as it is, much larger than that, but this is way, way, way too heavy. So that's the difference there. And then you have to pay attention to how smooth they are. So sometimes you see those cats and this is not to diss anyone or any, any brand. This is just how it feels in my hands. So when you would think that, oh my gosh, it's so cute. These are actually not bad, but for some reason, I don't like how they just sit on the needle. And they're very, they're not smooth. So this is what I don't like. Um, those ones, the round ones with cat ears, they all look pretty, but because of the ears, uh, the gravity took place. So they just sit on the needle in an awkward way. And these are very light, but they're not smooth. And for some reason, I just, I think I prefer the round ones because they just, you know, they just sit better on a needle. They glide better on a needle. That's what I'm looking for. So that's that. Um, these are again from Ridiculously Cute from Jen from Etsy. Um, I'll link her account below. I don't earn anything from it. Again, like this is just, I buy them. I buy basically everything except for maybe a few gifts that were given to me by friends. Um, I buy all of it. This is what I enjoy. This is what I like. So um, these are from Jen. It's just so cute. And it's very smooth. It's thin enough, thick enough. And she actually cares about all of this, the movement, how light they are. Um, and they come in different sizes, but this is the size that I prefer, these ones. So four to five to seven inches, uh, inches, millimeters. Um, okay, so let's move on to the numbered ones. I use numbered stitch markers in my patterns excessively because I want to guide you through easier. And they're coming my patterns but the point of reference it'll be easier for you to know okay around stitch before stitch marker one make double increase something like that so easier to just follow through with a pattern and these are the regular standard ones and then you have the ones that you can actually uh, the removable ones like that that you can actually write on these uh, with a permanent marker not as permanent because you can wipe them at, uh, after a certain time but these ones you can number and they do come with numbers like little numbers and they're pretty flexible and light so i'm looking for that in a stitch marker always and then they come in tiny little ones so i have different numbered ones on uh, these ones see they're little round ones very light um easy to see the number uh, very easy to glide through the needle again because this part is pretty uh, flexible and movable very easy see it just it just lays there like it just does and with the numbered stitch markers I uh, use see even mixed in I use these as supporting stitch markers just to separate where I started making increases I will put, I will place that uh, little supporting stitch marker, the simple, simple, simple ring. So I know that between this ring and let's say number one, I would increase, you know, I don't know, you know what I mean? This many stitches, so I can easily count them. So I use stitch markers a lot to guide me through, to support me. Um, they are my best friend. Um, a while back, I'm not sure what happened. If somebody knows, please let me know. Uh, this used to be Everyday Peacocks. I'm not sure what happened to the shop. Uh, it's closed on Etsy. But I bought a set a uh, million years ago. This was a very long time ago. So these are silver, you know, they're a little tarnished. So you can tell. I do work with them, but this is they, they just get a little dark over time. Um, this is for the cables. I use them all the time. I like this one more than this. Um, I used to just kind of separate it a bit more here. So the stitches uh, slide easier for the cables, but I discovered something better than that. So I had those cats um, spiral ones that I like more. So these, again, they are the right thickness. They're the right size. They don't snag, although they have those intricate details. 
they don't snag on anything. These are my one of my favorite, favorite ones. I even wanted like earrings like that at some point. But because they're flexible and they have that extra ring here, um, they're not they are not rigid. They're not not like that, you know. I like this, you know. I like when they dangle a little bit. It feels better in my hands. And again, these, yeah, I use these, but I don't particularly enjoy using them. And then these, yeah, this is Jan's. This is ridiculously cute. Um, also this, just to show you a little bit of ridiculously cute. Also this, they come in different kind of sets. Jan spoils people rotten. Um, or in the sets like that, you know, a little bling on your knitting. Perfect, just perfect. Um, you can tell I'm crazy about stitch markers. So, and then you can get a little necklace that will hold those stitch markers. So that's that. These are my very, very old ones. I use them a lot, although they're pretty sturdy and not flexible at all. I still like them. I don't know why. I just, these, um, I have a set of eight. I like them a lot. Um... These are larger and I can use them on smaller needles. And although they are not as smooth as I would like them to be, see, they're still pretty smooth. I don't know how to, I don't know how to tell you the difference, but they are slightly rigid. They're not as smooth, but I guess overall feel is just, it's just good. So I like these. I like that they're large uh, because sometimes I do use larger needles and these will fit any needles. And then tweak and horn. These ones, so it's a set. They're mixed with some other ones. Um, woolen wire. I like woolen wire, but only these ones. The ones that uh, have more move to them. Uh, these ones, woolen wire. Mm, I use them. I still use them a lot, but not my favorites. And again, the lobster claw ones. Um, they're very heavy, very heavy. So I need them sometimes. I use them, but not as often. Um, Jans, these ones, that, and that, ridiculously cute, ridiculously cute. Jan named them the right way, they're all ridiculously cute and very good, uh, movable friendly, knitters friendly. Uh, wool and wire, still, they're mixed in, still, see? So I still use them, but I, uh, as the time goes by, I don't like them as much, so there it is. And then the set from uh, Twig and Horn, it came with my, or, with the order with my um, Twig and Horn um, circular needle um, uh, case. Case, yeah. I have two. Um, I use one, and one is still new. Um, maybe at some point um, I will celebrate uh, some kind of holiday or something, and um, maybe draw a price. Who knows? So these are just like coconuts, but not colorful. Um, why I don't like them? Why? <clears throat> if I use them to mark my uh, short rows, right? If I just place them here and there. Imagine if there will be a lot of them on the needles and they will move, right? Sometimes they turn upside down like that. And it would have been okay, except for when you try to knit and try to push it, see what happens? It's just, you have to constantly take care to turn them. And I don't like that extra work. So I love them as a um, progress keeper. I don't like them as stitch markers, but if I don't have anything, I always have these with me, always, anywhere I go. Um, I use those. Lately, I just, I have this. From, I have a little pouch from Mood. They make uh, leather goods, leather bags for knitters. And not just knitters, but mostly the Mood Living is knitters. So I just have this one where I usually have them. Um, the stitch markers on either, they will be on this ring, kind of like that ring. Different color ring, mostly they will be like that. These came with this numbered set. And I like them a lot. So I just keep those extra ones. 
whether they're, num they're numbered or these ones with a clasp. I have a lot of them to mark the short rows. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Anyway, um, I wanted to share with you also the stitch markers, the numbered stitch markers that I just ordered that look like that, only they're removable, which I would prefer over this. And the stitch marker advent calendar with over 50 stitch markers, um, it was a steal. Uh, she raised the price by $10, but um, I thought it would be so much fun because I've never had an advent calendar and it would be so much fun uh, to just open a little box with uh, that looks like a like a suitcase, like an old one. <clears throat> so it will be so much fun to just open one. Um, I think it's 24 boxes in, in a set. So it'll be so much fun to open and use them up. And I use all of these. I love all of these. Um, these ones will be given away at some point. Um, I'll just include them. These came with my Lantern Moon. I don't particularly like these. Um, they're flexible. Nothing, nothing, nothing bad about them, no. But to my taste, they're very thin. They're thinner than I want them to be. I want a little more substance to them and a little more maybe weight to them. Um, these are great, but they're just not my cup of tea. So I kept them like this as a set. Um, they came with my Lantern Moon set uh, interchangeable needles, the new ones. Um, so these will, will be given away. Some lucky viewer will get it. All right, so these are my treasures um this is not all of it so there you go and there's a few more like that so um the original ones that i showed you before that's that's this this set um this one actually these i like these so much that i got those but they are not flexible at all these i want to show you these because these are so different all right these ones have a twist to them can you see it? They're pretty comfortable to use, actually. On the needle, it just glides on, even though uh, the uh, the bead is a little bulky, but it still stays really well on a needle and moves well on a needle. Thin enough, not too thick, light, um, but with a touch of weight, oh, perfect, just perfect stitch markers. And well then, like all kinds of blood about a fun. These are just simple ones with a little bead, but thicker. Um, regular ones, little clasp ones, flowers, um, stitches that mark uh, yarn overs, um, just clasp ones. But let me show you this. So I have numbered ones like that. What I like in a clasp, the rounder clasp, this is kind of oval. I'm going to compare two. So you can see this is oval. These do not sit well on a needle. They just don't. They This is not too thick of a needle, but they sit awkwardly on a needle. You never know where where they will lay. They lay where they may. Um, the rounder just fits perfectly. You know what I mean? It just goes around. It just really twists around the needle. Um, these ones... Not so much. You never know when to where to turn them. I don't know. Maybe just me. I don't particularly like these. Um, but I was experimenting, so this set is just sitting here. I doubt I ever work with them. Will ever work with them. But we'll see. I keep some of them for fun. Um, there's regular ones like this. Still a lot of fun. A lot of movement. This is what I like, and because it's just a little bling on your needles. Just a little something beautiful. Use them everywhere. They're my little helpers and they help a lot. So there it is. It's a chaos. It's my perfect chaos. And I love it all and I use it all. Um, see, this is just gorgeous.